want to explain something real quick to you guys about oaths. Oaths. O-A-T-H-S. Oaths. Every public official at the federal level has to take an oath. If you take an oath, you're promising to uphold and defend the Constitution. So if you take an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution, and then you act outside of the Constitution, you're acting outside your oath, which means you're acting without power. Someone who acts without power has no power to act. So there is no power outside the Constitution when you're sitting in a constitutional office under an oath. You take an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution, meaning that you have to, in all your acts, abide by your oath, the Constitution. So anytime you act outside your office, outside the Constitution, you're performing an act outside the office to which you're sitting in, which you have no power to perform. So if you have no power to perform the act, the act does not exist. So there are no acts outside the Constitution because no one in a constitutional office who has the power to act has, has then the power to act outside the Constitution. I'm not trying to speak in circles. I'm trying to tell you what I've read in a book on habeas corpus where the president suspended the right to the writ of habeas corpus to which he had no right to suspend. There is no suspension to the right of habeas corpus. And so when he took an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution and then he violated his oath by suspending the right to the writ of habeas corpus, he didn't have a right to suspend the right to the writ of habeas corpus. And so he never actually suspended the right to habeas corpus because he ha had no right to suspend it. It is cyclical. They call it elliptical. It's redundant. Um, but it's circular logic, I guess you could say. So there, there is no acts, if you're sitting in a constitutional office under oath, that you can do that are legitimate when they violate your oath because you don't have the power to do the act while sitting in an office under oath established by the Constitution. So anyone who takes an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution cannot perform any act outside the Constitution with any legitimacy because there are no constitutional offices or oaths to the Constitution, which then allow you to have a power outside the oath. When I write this, people don't seem to understand it, so I figured I'd make a video on it and try to explain it. If I take an oath to the Constitution and I violate the Constitution, it doesn't matter because I'm not sitting in a constitutional office. But when someone's sitting in a constitutional office and they're getting paid by the public funds and they have an oath to uphold and defend the constitution they're not going to get paid to violate their oath and if they do violate the oath they're they're automatically stepping outside their office so when these instrumentalities are doing business with the federal government they're not in federal offices so they can take oaths all day long it doesn't matter but in order for them to bring you in under any of their powers being not them in constitutional office that they're trying to exercise they have to get you to sign an agreement meaning you voluntarily agree to follow whatever laws it is or whatever titles it is or whatever's written on the paper the federal paper or the form this allows them to then exert violence over you by putting you in jail or bringing you into some court system when you decide that that you don't want to do the thing that you agreed to do by by contract 
So the military industrial complex is a bunch of corporations that are supposed to be working for the military on military posts doing military things. But what they've been doing are all these corporations is they've been coming off the posts, acting as a private corporation off post and contracting with private people which are not under the constitution. And I did a video on this um, over state and what state is in the constitution. State in the constitution are the federal military areas inside the states that created the federal government. These dependent states, these military states have no authority off federal lands. So they hire these contractors called instrumentalities to do work on federal lands, but these instrumentalities are located off federal lands or on federal lands, could be both. But while they're off federal lands, they're still doing work for the federal government by contracting with private people to get private people to uh, agree to come under federal control the control of the instrumentalities. They may have an oath, but it doesn't matter if they're not sitting in, a, in an office created by the federal government, by the constitution. So they're going back and forth, on, off, in, out, and they're trying to come off to bring private people who have nothing to do with the federal government and not under federal control in under the federal government. So they can violate their oath because they're not sitting in an office and they violate their oath, which is not really a violation of the oath because they have no constitutional office to sit in since they're contractors and contractors are private corporations. So if they don't have a constitutional office and they're not under oath, then they can violate the constitution. And as long as they get you to sign a paper agreeing to it, then it's okay. They haven't violated anything and, and you still have to follow it because you agreed through your signature. If it was a federal government who had federal control and the right constitutionally to do a thing, they wouldn't need you to sign a paper. If you're on federal lands, then you come under the Constitution. If you're off federal lands, you don't, because the federal government did not create states that were free, sovereign, and independent. They created states that were military states, which are non-sovereign states, which are dependent states. They're like subjects. Okay, and that is in the Constitution. So try to understand what I'm saying about the Constitution and any act done by the federal government outside of its oath does not exist because they had no power while sitting in that office to do it. There is no power to act outside of the power. There is no power to act outside of the office. There is no power to act outside of the oath. So doing any act outside the Constitution, outside the office, outside the oath, has no, has no power, has no authority, has no weight. That's why it's void, not voidable. Void means it's automatically non-existent. It doesn't exist. Voidable means it's questionable whether or not it was a constitutional act and therefore can be uh, judged in a court as to whether its act was constitutional or not. Anything but done by the military industrial complex pretending to be government has to be done off federal lands when it's done to private people and private people are not on federal lands and not under federal control. Okay, so like, share and subscribe. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll answer them. And um, try to see if you can try to understand this. And if you can try to explain it to your friends, if they don't, if you don't want to um, refer my videos to them, maybe you can sit down and have a conversation with them and gauge whether or not they're interested or whether or not they understand what you're telling them. 
So like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.